Hello, this is Ren Antra. I'm one of the librarians at Santa Monica College. Today we're going to be doing a database tour of the Computer Science Gale database. In order to get to the library homepage from the college homepage, mouse over Student Support and click on Library, or click on Student Support and scroll down to Academics. Library is in the center of the page. Once you're at the library homepage, there are a variety of access points with various useful types of information for you. Databases is where we're going to be spending most of our time today. We also have research guides on everything from how to do research to how to cite um, to specific areas like business or fashion. You can book a study room for yourself or your group. You can take a look at past workshops and videos on YouTube, as well as upcoming workshops that we'll be offering. And you can ask a librarian a research question 24-7. If you ask a, during a time that the SMC library is closed, you will be speaking with a librarian from a college or university from one of the other colleges in the consortium to which we belong. But at all times, you will be talking to a college librarian. If they can't answer your question, if it's very specific to SMC, they will send us what's called a ticket. And when we come back to work, we will answer that ticket, get back to you via email, and ensure that you have gotten your answers. Further down the page, we have our upcoming events. We have links to our resources. We have hours and contact information and our social media links. So today we're going to take a look at a specific database um, having to do with computers. So today my topic is going to be how artificial intelligence is impacting or can be used for coding. Now, I don't want to type in artificial intelligence where it says search for databases because this does not search the contents of the databases. It searches the description of the database. So that might be a little too specific for me to find a good database. Um, if I'm looking specifically for things like newspapers or biographies or journals, I can look by database type. But for this search, I'm really more interested in trade publications, which are sort of halfway between a magazine and a journal. So this isn't going to help me. Instead, I'm going to head over to all subjects. And there is one for computer science. Now, as you know, we have 117 databases as of March of 2024. When you click on that specific subject, it takes out over 100 of them. And it leaves you with the 12 databases that are either specifically about your topic or have measurable content on your topic. So today we're going to take a look at Computer Science Scale 1 file. It provides access to both business and technical publications in computer, telecommunications, and electronics industries. It has both popular periodicals and scholarly journals, news, and reviews in a variety of areas related to this topic. So this looks like it would be a good one for me to take a look at. When I go in here, I have a number of places I can start with. If I know, for example, I want to look at PC Magazine, I can go specifically to a publication search. If I want to take a look at the subject index to see what subjects this database uses, I can take a look at that. I can look at the topic finder, or I can search directly for my topic. So I'm going to first take a look at the subject guide search and see what does it have. Um, I can look by the topic. I can look by the publication again. So because this is specifically computer science, um, my sort of outlier term is artificial intelligence because it's artificial intelligence as applied to coding. So I'm going to say and coding and I'm going to search it within the subject guide. The difference between searching in the subject guide and searching generally is the general search searches for keywords. So it looks for these words anywhere within the text of an article. In a subject guide, it is an assigned subject heading. So it must have the assigned subject heading of artificial intelligence, which is listed, and it must have the assigned subject term of coding. So we may or may not get a good result from this. Let's see. When I search that, it says, oh, no, I can't find that. And the reason why it can't find it is because coding is not a subject term used in this database. The easy way to tell for sure before you do the search is, does it come up? So artificial intelligence does. So I can take a look at this, and I can say, what are the subdivisions and related subjects to artificial intelligence? There are over 21,000 articles and other pieces of information on this topic. So subdivisions are smaller groups, smaller topics within the broader topic of artificial intelligence. Related subjects are subjects 
that are outside of artificial intelligence but have some relational aspect to them. So I'm going to start with subdivisions and it tells me here are all the various things that we have articles on. Notice coding is not listed. So I can scroll through here and see if there's anything useful for me. And if there is, I can go directly to that and take a look at it. So I'm going to pick one just to show you what it's like. And within this, it will tell me the overlap of these two subject headings, artificial intelligence and usage, gives me a lot of popular literature and a lot of academic journals. So it might be a little bit too much. So I can filter that. I can say, give me just, say, from 2022 to 2024, because that's when the explosion of AI development has occurred. Apply that. That cuts it down considerably, but it's still quite a bit. So then I can take a look and say what subjects are within this. Of this, um, say, 225 academic journal articles, all of them are on artificial intelligence, but 36 of them are on algorithms, and only 18 of them are specifically on computer science. So I can click that subject to narrow it down. And then once I do that, then I can take a look at an article, it will allow me to change how it displays to make it easier for me to digest. It will allow me to save it, email it, to download it and print it. I can cite it, get a citation for it, and get a permanent link to it. It will give me the abstract, which describes what is in this journal article. Always very useful because journal articles can be long and complex. And the abstract boils it down to what is the heart of this article? Is it primary research? What is it trying to do? Then it gives me um, information about it and it gives me related articles that I can then take a look at as well. And then if I don't like this or I want something different I can go back to my results and I can look again. The other way that you can take a look for your particular topic is through the general keyword search. Think of this as the um, if I can spell it right, as the Google version of it. Uses in coding. Notice I'm not giving it a specific sentence. I'm just giving it the keywords that it can look for. If I give it too many, too many terms, it will be very confused. So when I do this, in magazines, it gives me tips and tricks. Okay. In journal articles, which there are more of, it gives me series reports. It talks about various algorithms and how those are changing, authentication, contextual searching, interactive critiquing, and it gives me a few news reports as well. So if I'm looking for a trade journal, something that is written by and for people within that specific industry, something like this might be quite useful. I can click on it. It gives me all of the same options as the journal article that I saw before. Gives me the actual article. Allows me to cite it. Make sure you fix your citation after you put it in your paper. You don't want to lose points because the bot screwed up your citation. And it gives me related articles just like the other one did. So this might be quite useful as well. So that's a quick introduction to how you can use the computer science database either using subject terms or keyword searches to find specific popular trade and academic articles to support your research. If you have any questions at any time, you can always ask a librarian. Good luck with your research!